Most line followers are too slow or don't work. I'm going to show you a fast and accurate line follower that you can use with Spike in competitive robotics. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video and leave a comment about what topic you want me to cover next. Like most line follower programs, we need to find a value in between the white and the black and designate it as our target value that our robot will steer toward. So to do that, I'm going to create a new variable by clicking make a variable and I'm going to call it the target. And this target I'm going to set to 66 and if you want to know how I got that value, you can check out this video here. And then next I'm going to set a arbitrary number for the proportional part of this program and I'm going to assign another variable for that and call it kp. And kp I'm going to set to 0.2 and depending on your robot this value can be a number of things and we will adjust it later after testing the program. Then in this case I'm going to run this line follower forever so I'm going to take a forever block but if you want to stop it after a certain condition is met you can also program that with the uh, if then or repeat until statements. And then what I'm going to do is assign another variable called speed change which will change the speed of the motors in order to make the adjustments for the robot to reach the target value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable called speed change and we actually base the value of speed change based on the values based on the values of the target and the current uh, color sensor value. So what I'm going to do is set the speed change value to a mathematical expression, which is going to be the target value, which I can get from the variable area, and the value of the reflected light intensity of the color sensor. I've put my color sensor in port F, so I'm going to switch this to port F. And then what I'm going to do is multiply it by the proportional constant over here. And the reason I do this is because the error is going to be very large if we take it in its raw form. So the target value is 66, but if it's on pure white, the value is going to be 100. 100 minus 66 is 34. And if we try to adjust the speed by 34, both motors might end up going above 100. And that can lead to the robot making very jerky movements. And so in order to do this, we control it by multiplying it by a factor that's usually less than one in order to prevent large adjustments from being made. So I'm going to add a multiplication block and I'm going to put this into the first part and then I'm going to put the value of kp into the second part. And then what I need to do is set the motors. And now what we need to do is change the speed of the motors that are moving the robot. And so my motors are connected into port C and into port D so I'm going to bring those two blocks in. And then what we want to do is we want to use the value of speed change in order to modify the speed of the motors. So and for the C motor, I'm going to add something to the value, and for the D motor, I'm going to subtract. And that basically allows us to make one motor move faster and the other motor move slower, depending on where we are on the line. And so I'm going to set the baseline speed for both of these at 50, because that is in the middle and we can accordingly adjust, and the maximum speed will then be 100, that both of these could technically reach if the error is large enough. And then I'm going to add the speed change variable to both of these, which will control the uh, final speed of these motors. And then I'm going to start both motors. In my case, my motors are flipped compared to each other, and as a result, they need to be moving in opposite directions. So this is how I would set it up, but for your robot, it might be different depending on the motor configuration that you have. And this is the program that I have right now. Take note that my KP value is 0.2. This is what it looks like when I run it. And the problem with this is that the robot is making very jerky movements and it's falling off of the line. And in order to fix this, all we need to do is reduce the KP value to 0.1, which is slightly lower, but low enough such that the changes that we're making to the motor speeds are not large enough so that they're jerking. And now when you run it, you can see that it's a much smoother program and the robot is following the line pretty accurately. So we can continue to use this KP value of 0.1. And the good thing about this program is that if you have a color sensor shield, you can use the same exact program with the same exact values at a competition setting and during practice because the values are going to be the same because the color sensor shield is protecting your sensor and whatever values that you read during practice is going to be the same that you see during the competition.